welcome back to the next leg of our adventure. An episode of many firsts and some very valuable lessons. We're going to do something a little bit different in this episode. Uh, I think many of you are well aware that I love my music in an episode. I think for me it just sets the scene and really, if you pick the right music, it really captures the moment as we're experiencing it. I feel like that's the best way to communicate it. Um, however, in this particular episode, we're going to do something a tiny bit different. It's going to be a bit of a one-off, unless you guys want to have more of it, then we'll do it more frequently. I don't think I have it in me to ditch the music entirely. I just, I just love it too much. But following a Facebook post on a sailing YouTube channel Facebook page, uh, a lot of people were having a conversation about um, experiencing the sounds and the kind of sensory experience, the ASMR, I think they call it, of sailing and not drowning it out with too much music. So I think in this particular episode, we're just going to try and focus a little bit more on how we see it, how we feel it, how we hear it, and just share that with you. Um, as it is, the reality of it, as best we can with, with trying to minimise all the wind noise that comes with sailing a boat. And uh, the other thing that we heard you guys saying an awful lot of is more sailing, more sailing, more sailing. And so this episode is going to be more sailing. If you watch last week's episode, you will know that we decided to head east. And by we, I mean, well, Hank, Hank basically decided we're going to head east. Shortly after making that decision, an incredibly harrowing sight came into the marina. A sailing boat had been brutally dismasted just a short distance from Dartmouth and the coastline here recently has been hit hard by, by several gales and the, the strong winds and the big seas have made sailing here that much more difficult. And seeing this crippled yacht up close and first hand really gave us some pause for thought. Well, this poor boat's had a really bad time. It came in a couple of days ago. Clearly the whole mast is just twisted, snapped, and obviously the rigging's gone off. So um, I had a little chat with the guys in the office and they don't know exactly what's happened, but speculation is that it could have been a, a really bad crash jive. Could you imagine what that must be like? Could you imagine just how just nothing can really get you ready for it, can it? You know, you're out there, the weather is crazy, the wind is crazy, the sea stays crazy. The next thing you know, your mast is just being torn down and stays flying, boom, breaking. I can't, like I say, no amount of preparedness really can 100% get you ready for it until you experience it. I think it's just definitely something I don't want to experience. I'm going to be hitting YouTube later, trying to find some YouTube. I'm coming for you. We need some preventative measures. I think that's going to be the order of the afternoon. It's pretty harrowing when you see something like that. It's just a reminder who's in charge. Mother Nature. Proper prior preparation. That's what my head chef always used to say to me. Yeah. He, I mean, he used to shout it, uh, actually, most of the time. <laughs> he used to shout it at me. What's up, mate? I'm doing all I can. Do you trust me? That's good. That's good. So our windows of opportunity to leave this safe haven were thin. The weather was absolutely relentless, low pressure after low pressure system coming in, although Carly managed to find an opening in these weather systems, although this particular window of opportunity was only small, 10 hours to be precise. And that is, of course, providing the weather reports are accurate in the first place. I was just looking at the sea state um, and I was using predict wind to tell me the wave height. And then I was calculating roughly where we would be at certain times and then correlating that with what that says the swell is doing on here. So we just need to scoot around the bill before the wind picks up and we should then hopefully experience no more than one and a half meters of swell. That's what I'm hoping. I know I just want some sunshine because it blue skies make it feel better. Um, <laughs> And then I think it's going to be okay. Oh, I don't know what other other planning I can do. <laughs> I think you've um, we've done all we can, and now the rest is in the hands of the gods. 
So if you guys remember a few episodes ago when Carly and I got into a little bit of a uh, bother with our engine in Portland, you might remember a lovely couple that came all the way, sailed from Southampton to Portland to give us a helping hand, Mark and his lovely wife, Pippa. If you don't know what episode I happen to be talking about, then it's this one here. And uh, as I say, if, if you've not seen it because you're new here, then just take a second now, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you won't miss another episode. Although if you did miss that episode and you are already subscribed, it's probably because you haven't hit the notifications bell. The YouTube does that. You can, they slip through the net sometimes. You don't hit the tab. Uh, anyway, I was talking about Mark. So after Carly and I had decided on the date that we were prepared to leave, we'd seen a weather window, we agreed on a plan. Mark very kindly offered to uh, have a peruse over our proposed plan and have a much more experienced eye take a look at it for us and then share his thoughts and feedback with us here. That's much better that you gain the full seven hours of tide. So that is more helpful to you. I've looked at it a few times yesterday and today and uh, I, I think ultimately, yeah, it might be a bit of a bumpy ride, but it'll be... Yeah. It, it'll be fine and it'll give you some good experience. Um, <laughs> because if you don't do it then yeah. you'll be there till Sunday. Because I don't I think Saturday that the next low that's coming through um is is not predictable at the moment and it no. looks uh, probably Friday, Saturday. And now, confident in our departure timings, there was just one job left. What are you doing? I am figuring this preventer malarkey out. I think I've got it. Although there doesn't seem to be a complete consensus online. There's a lots of different options and there's boom brakes and all these different devices. But for the sake of, uh, for our needs, everyone basically sort of said, look, you tie a bowling at the back. I'm thinking it's here. I don't know whether it's here. You've got a bowling at the back and we're going to feed it forward. And it says through like the eye of a cleat, through the middle of the cleat. And then you can pull it back here. So if you let the boom go out, and then you pull it here, this stops it bouncing back, and you just tie it off back here, and then we can control it. Although I might use a bigger cleat than this, but then we can control it um, so that for any of our followers or fans or friends who aren't really into sailing, the the we, we spoke earlier about the chap's boat whose mast snapped, and people are speculating it might have been like a crash jibe or two or three. So what we don't want to do, because we're going to be sailing with the wind behind us and the sea state is probably going to be a bit bumpy, that if the boat is being lifted and twisted at some point with the wind behind us, that could change our position relative to the wind, which gets the wind behind the sail and then swings it across really violently to the other side, which means that other than taking our heads off, it could also break the stays and snap the gooseneck and break the boom and our whole thing all comes tumbling down um, like a house of cards. So hopefully this spare rope that we had rigged up in this manner means that when we want to if we need to change and jibe to the other side then we can do it in a controlled way and we won't accidentally lose the whole arm so i think that's right although if somebody watches this and has said spotted something i've done wrong then uh let us know in the comments <laughs> it might be too late by then but yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 hopefully not hopefully not I think we're as ready as we can be, sweetheart. Well, yeah, apart from uh, those rods there, I think. Our adventure, <laughs> our adventure awaits. Yes, it does. Yes. <sighs> All right, tomorrow is the day. Big one. I know to a lot of people, it's not really a big deal, you know, sailing around Portland Bill. Um, and I know we've already done it once, but we did it in the summer. You know, it's now halfway through October. The weather's been horrendous. It's slightly less, more, slightly less predictable this time of year. And we're having to leave at five o'clock in the morning. So this is going to be our first time sailing on our own in the dark. So there's a lot of firsts here for us. And we need to get the timing right. We need to leave this early to make sure that we get to Portland Bill for one o'clock. And this should give us plenty of time. We should probably be there before one o'clock. And being there early doesn't matter. We need to get there before the tide turns at two because we've got a strong-ish wind by that point coming in from the west. The tide turning into that would be pretty... Portland Bill would be a pretty disgusting place to be at that point in time. So we need to get there on time and then we can... Uh, 
yeah, that's it. That's the hurdle. That's the hurdle. I'm both excited and nervous in equal measure. But I feel like once we've done this, it feels on some levels if we've like we've leveled up. It feels it feel like we've leveled up to, you know, keen amateurs. Good morning. It is very early in the morning. It's about 4.30 in the morning and it is our departure time. It's pitch black outside, so this is going to be our first time, as I've said already, with just Carly and I sailing in the dark. So we only have a few hours of darkness, so not quite night sailing, but it may as well be. Just fingers crossed we don't run in, into any lobster pots in the dark as well. That's always a, a bit of a hazard to think about. I can hear Hank arising, so uh, let's see if I can get him to go to the toilet. That'll be a big... Hello, matey. How you doing? How you doing? You good? Yes, that was you're, good probably, you're probably thinking, what in the hell are we doing after this time, right? Yeah. This isn't wakey-wakey time. What's going on? This is not wakey-wakey time. Oh, come on. Good news is, I can't hear any wind howling, so that's never a bad thing. That's a good start. All right, as I said, if I can get Hank to go for a wee and a poo, that would be one, technically two, less things to worry about once we're out there. Yes! He's done it. A pee and a poo. I never thought I'd be so excited about Hank going for a poo. But, uh, uh, there we go. Good boy. That's like, shh, 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 shh. Don't go mental. Don't go mental. On you go. Good boy. You see, now in my head, I've got a little timer that's just started. Like Jack Bauer in that series 24. I can hear it. I've got eight hours, eight hours to get to the tip of Portland. And there it is, just did, did. <laughs> Let's actually see what's going on. Mission complete. see how you know, it might be bouncing off the headlands or something so yeah sometimes it gets a bit fickle how's hank you all right mate i'm sleeping no, he's fast asleep. Yeah. okay i don't know how well this will pick me out but it's not particularly windy out here uh it, there's a bit of swell we're rolling about a bit so I've, i'm tethered in i'm tethered in uh to the front of the boat because we know there's an insane amount of lobster pots around here and really not wanting to bump into one of those. We've got the main up, we've got the main all the way out, the wind behind us, there is there's only about six knots. Um, we rigged that up to a preventer just so it's all set. And um, before we get the head sail out, I say we're just going to keep an eye out for these lobster pots that are just everywhere, both sides of Lime Bay. And then once we've got a little bit of light, which shouldn't be long now, maybe an hour, hour and a half, I can slowly start to see daybreak ahead. But about an hour, an hour and a half, we should have light see where we're going and we can get the sails up and keep an eye out for the lobster pots from the comfort of the cockpit. This head torch only shines lights up such a small area. We note to self, buy a bigger torch. Just looking for lobster pots in the pitch black.
never ever gets old. Just a so many, so many dolphins. And that's another great thing about sailing the, the, the around the British Isles is the fact that we've just got so much life in our seas. It's 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 amazing to see. <laughs> Gonna try popping the GoPro in the water to get a closer look at these cheeky chappies. the trip magical every time these phenomenal animals absolutely amazing You heard the captain. She's not feeling very. She's not feeling very well. The seasickness has got her again. Something about Portland. Something about the worry and stress of Portland. Although everything seems to be going really smoothly, but the, the momentum isn't great. There's quite a lot of swell from the last few days, I imagine, of um, of wind. And so, even though we haven't got a great deal of wind now, we're being kind of like picked up and moved about and wow, all over the place so she'll feel better once she's got it out. It's a tough life for you too. <laughs> oh all right we um I'm just coming in towards Portland now. We've just turned just past the shambles and we were just pottery along at about 18, 19, 20 knots of wind. We had a reef in the main and a reef in the uh, head sail. And then all of a sudden, 30, 31, 32. <laughs> it's like, ah! And uh, yeah, all of a sudden we were very rapidly overpowered. And um, so yeah, we just wound a little bit more head sail in, just ease the main out a little bit, just to get the boat upright-ish again. And uh, we are now heading into Portland. All those cruise ships that we remember from last time, all ghostly looking cruise ships, dotted around. And um, yeah, I think we'll just give Portland, just radio Portland shortly and uh, let them know of our arrival. I really fancy mussels and chips. Got you want sausage and chips? No, mussels. You want mussels and chips? I really fancied mussels the other day. You really fancy mussels? Yeah. Check it out. <laughs> 